Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. If you notice over the last couple weeks, there has been a refreshing, there has been um, just an equipping, a commissioning, like God is stirring up our hearts for more. And I feel like tonight's message is just so timely. Even if you guys were here Sunday, how many of you guys were here Sunday? What a powerful message, right? And God is just stirring us up to go. And I believe that today's message is, it's called Unique Because I believe God today is going to give you vision to understand how unique you are in the body of Christ. Amen? So let's go ahead and pray. Father, we just thank you so much for this opportunity um, to share tonight. We pray, Father, that you would speak through us. And I pray that every heart would be open today. Every mind would have understanding tonight for what you have to share with them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, if you guys don't know us, hopefully you all know us, but if you don't, I'm Jessica. This is Steve, and we are the prayer ministry leaders here at Elevate Church, and it is just such a blessing and a privilege to be um, over this amazing team. We are super passionate about the presence of God and about hearing his voice, and it's been an awesome journey to be over the last few years for us leading to be able to see how God is growing prayer ministry here in this house. Our prayer ministry consists of intercessory prayer and healing rooms. And so I get to do a little plug today since I'm up here and no one can take the mic away. Wow. (laughs) Wow. Just kidding. But our, you know, this is a church that's alive. How many of you guys know that? This is a church that's alive. The Holy Spirit is here. It's moving. And it's important that we are praying as the Spirit leads us for this house because the enemy doesn't mess with the church that's dead. There's no reason to mess with the dead church. And so this is a church that's alive. And so we feel a calling to raise up intercessors to understand why it's so important to pray for the house of God. Amen. If this is your house, you need to cover your house in prayer. It's vital. And then the healing room ministry. Just the same way that you would cover your own house. You know, you would cover your house in prayer. Um, you cover this house. This is your spiritual house. You know, one, there was a night one night, um, you know, being part of the prayer team, being part of intercessory prayer, there was a night that I was asleep. And in my sleep, I was being, um, we were at like a, a, a healing room time, and, and I was praying for someone. And then I felt like the, this great oppression on me. You know, like I felt like the enemy was on top of me. And I, my wife was in the same room, and I was looking at her, and I was smiling, you know? I was like, this is so cool. Like, he's literally attacking me. Like, like, how cool is that? Like, he's literally afraid of me. And it was because a house that's alive, he's going to attack. Mm-hmm. He's going to attack a house that's alive. There's no reason, like my wife said, to attack somewhere that nothing's happening. Yeah. Because he's already succeeding there. Yeah. But he wasn't afraid because I wasn't he knows afraid. that we have authority Amen. and that the attacks are going to come, but we're going to pray. Amen. And then our healing room ministry is so awesome because we were healed in this house. We um, came in seven years ago broken. Um, our marriage was falling apart. Our family was falling apart. And it took sitting in God's presence and it took people that were willing to take the time to sit with us and share a word from heaven for us like they took that time they took us through prayers of deliverance and we just found so much healing and we realized like wow somebody took the time to do that for us we want to be able to do that for other people and so we encourage you come to a healing room because there's teams that are waiting to share the word of god and and to pray and minister to you and um I, why are we sharing these things? We're not trying to promote right now, even wow. though it seems like it. It's like a big commercial, but no. Um, we're sharing these things because we want you guys to understand that God took a broken family, and he now has given us dreams and vision, and he's given us a lane to run in. This is our passion now. It's our passion to see people understand the presence of God, and this is the lane that God has called us to run in, and we believe that God has called you to run in a lane as well. There are things that you are passionate about. There are things that you love that only you understand, and there's no other you. You are unique, amen? Amen. So, I look around and I see people like Pastor Bobby. Is she in this room tonight, Pastor Bobby? She is so full of love. Oh, my goodness. And I think I'm pretty full of love, too. But 
But Pastor Fabi has an anointing and a call to minister in, in ways to, to single women that I could never minister to. She's, I, not, but she's not single no more. Well, she's not single anymore. <laughs> but she has an anointing because she knows what it's like yes. to be single without God and to be single with God. And so God has anointed her to minister to single women now. That isn't our story. <laughs> and, you know, I look at Pastor Edgar. Where's Pastor Edgar? Woo, woo, woo. Hi, Pastor Edgar. Um, you know, Pastor Edgar has an anointing to minister to people that are less fortunate than, than most people. He knows what it's like to live having everything and then losing everything. You know, there, he's gone through what it's like to be homeless. And now he has a call and an, and an anointing on his life to minister to those that are in need and to help them get out of that situation. That is special. I can't do that. Yep. And Pastor Edgar is called to do that. And so I think it's important that we all see we all carry something so individual and we need each other because even though we all have different dreams, we all have different roles, we are all the same body of Christ and Amen. we need each other. There's not one part of the body that's better than the other part. There's not one part of the body that we can say, oh, I don't really need that person. No, I need what you have and I can't function without you. And so I want you guys, um, we're going to read actually um, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I'm just going to read through it so you could follow along. The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some are Gentiles, some are slaves, some are free, but we all have been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we all share the same spirit. Yes, the body may have different parts, not just one part. If the foot says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not a hand, that does not make it any less a body, part of the body. And if the ear says, I'm not part of the body because I'm not an eye, would that make it any less part of the body? If the whole body were an eye, how would you hear? If your whole body were an ear, how would you smell anything? But our bodies have many parts, and God has put each part just where he wants it. You know, God has been um, talking to us personally a lot about vision and um, dreaming with God, you know. But this passage, when I read this, it really challenges me to ask the question, is what I'm doing in my vision, in my lane, in my role, is it, is it just for me or is it for the entire body? You know, so we have to really think, I play a part in a bigger vision. I play a part in a bigger role. And is what I'm doing, is it just for me or is it for everyone? Sometimes we get lost in that. You know, sometimes we get lost in our own dreams. You know, sometimes we, we dream so big that we forget about God. And we forget that God is the one who placed that dream in us. You know, um, when we, we always like to challenge ourselves and dream big. We're like, let's dream far beyond what we can think about. But we always have to come back for ministry, for us, because this is our home. You know, our family is always like, why do you spend so much time at church? You know, and it's like, well, because when I was in the world, it sucked. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It, it was horrible. You know, I was an alcoholic. I was this, I was that. You know, I was unhappy. But when I'm here, and when I came here, I found restoration. I found healing. So that's why when I talk about my dreams and visions, it includes this house. Because what, what I came to find out was someone else's obedience brought my blessing in this house. If it wasn't for them dreaming big, I wouldn't be here today. I would not be here today. Yeah. Um, a couple weeks ago in one of our Ignite services... I, had, um, I saw a picture during worship, and it was of a boxer, and he was in his corner uh, with his trainer. And the boxer, the trainer was cleaning his wounds and giving him water and whatever trainers do. I don't know. I'm not into boxing. <laughs> um, but it was really cool because I, I really felt like, um, like God was saying, this is your water break. I need you to refocus. Like, here we are in July. We're in the seventh month of the year. And I didn't know that boxing had 12 rounds. I had no idea. She was like, how many me. touchdowns are in boxing? I was like, that's not, that's not boxing. That's, that's, that's not boxing. I man. had no idea. But then it made me think, wow, there's 12 rounds in boxing. There's 12 months in a year. And so we're in our round 12. And I feel like God is saying, this is your water break. I need you to refocus right now. I need you to, to really... Um, 
to have vision right now for where we're going the rest of the year and where that's going to take you into your future because everything that God is preparing us this year, it's going to be for what's to come, amen? And so I just feel like that God reminded me of... Um, what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 9.26. And he said, I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing. And so we have to run with purpose. Everything that we do to accomplish our vision, yes. that we think, okay, God, you've given me a vision, but is it, am I running with purpose? Do I realize how that vision falls in this house? Is every single thing that I'm doing in my life when it comes to ministry to get me prepared for how God is going to raise me up in this house. Yeah, and as we were talking, I, I was, I got more into the vision of the boxing, you know, of the boxer. You know, he has a vision. He has a dream. And what's the dream of every boxer is to what? Become a champion, right? They don't just say, I'm going to box and just box. No, because it's, it's painful to be a boxer, right? You know, I didn't become a boxer because I'm too good looking. I, didn't, I did not want to mess with this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> No, but when I was thinking about a boxer, I was thinking, I was like, okay, so he's sitting with this trainer. You know, as a boxer, you come in. I was thinking when boxers meet each other, they're like this, right? They're ready. They're like sizing each other up. I'm going to knock you out in the first round. I'm going to take you out. And sometimes that's how we are, right? At the beginning of the year, we're ready. We're ready to run. We're ready to, nobody's going to stop us in ministry. Nobody's going to stop us with our dreams. But what happens? Stuff happens, right? Stuff happens, and then we start to slow down. We start to slow down, and then we get tired. Same thing with the boxer. See, once he's in round one, then round two, then round three, then he's sitting there, round six, and he's like, man, I thought I was going to win this fight. But then he has his trainer. His trainer comes and says, okay, this is what you were doing wrong, so let's switch it up. Let's switch it up. All those times that you were training is because of this. It was for this moment. It was to go the long run, you know, because I love how Paul says, imagine a boxer training and shadow boxing. What good does that do? I've never heard a boxer say, well, I shadow trained so much that I knew I was going to win this fight. <laughs> no, he needs to condition his body. He needs to condition his body. That's why we say when the body works together, we need to condition ourselves in the body, within the body of Christ, within our church, within our ministries here. But then he also conditions his mind. See, because it's all mind and body in boxing. Because what your legs are getting weary. Imagine your legs getting weary, how she was talking about how all the bodies work, how all the body parts work together. Imagine if his legs weren't working, but just the arms were working. Can't box sitting down, right? So that's what, what, I, what I was getting from that boxer vision is God is telling us this is our halftime. This is our mid, mid, mid six, this is six rounds. And he wants to give you guys vision for the rest of the year. So if you guys lost that vision or if it's that vision is dying down, he wants to reignite it tonight. And I love how she was saying there's this refreshing that's coming. There's this refreshing that we're, we're getting excited. How many of you guys are getting excited, right? Oh, man, all, thank you, all 10 people. Who's getting excited? All right, there you go. Let's, let's get excited. You know what I'm saying? When you, when you go outside tonight, just start punching. I'm just playing. You know? I've been hearing the word understanding. And the other day when I was in prayer, I heard God say... Um, that a new boldness and confidence would rise as people understand who they are and where they're going. So I believe that as we understand where we fit in the body, as we understand how precious we are, how unique we are, there is only one you. And when you can understand that, then you're going to have confidence and you're part of the body. Sometimes we become threatened by the people around us. Sometimes we're so focused on his part, like, hey, how come he gets to do that? Or how come he has those gifts? Or how, you know? But God is saying, no, I want you to focus on your part of the body. Understand who you are to me, how unique I've made you, and what I want to do with you. Amen? Amen. When we all have different body parts, right? We all have different, you know, hands, and, and we all, each body part plays a different role, right? And sometimes I want to play the part that she plays. Like, I can't, I can try, and I'm pretty good up to a certain point. I can't love the way my, my wife loves people. I don't have patience <laughs> the way she has patience. I will try. I will sit down with someone and listen to what they're talking about, hear them out, but the moment that they keep telling me, but it, I just keep falling into this pattern, into this pattern, into this, I'm, then I'm like, man, I, I can't take it no more. <laughs> like, dude, what are you, like, what are you doing? Not my wife, no. She's more like, it's okay, 
it's okay, it's, you know, it's, don't worry about it, let's pray through it. I'm like, like seriously, man, why don't you knock him upside the head? Like, you know what I'm saying? And what, what, <laughs> and what happens is there's confusion. Because sometimes I get a little confused. I'm like, maybe I don't love people the way you love people. Maybe I wasn't called to be part of the ma- prayer team. See, what happens is we have two feet, right? So we're walking with two feet, right? Now imagine if my hand wanted to be a third foot. I can't even touch the ground, so I'm not going to do it. You know what I'm saying? But imagine you, you'll be hopping. You'll be hop- I mean, that would look weird, right? So that's what happens. Sometimes we get a little like, well, why, why do they have this and I don't have it? I want to try it. Then it feels uncomfortable. Then it feels awkward. Then you're just like, that's not for me. That's not for me. That's not who I am. That's not what I want to do. And then we look at verse 26. Then this verse makes sense to us. To suffer with those who suffer and rejoice with those who rejoice. When we know who we're, what we're supposed to function every single area, we get to rejoice with all those people. We get to rejoice with everyone who's being promoted from ministry, ministry leaders. You know, we get to rejoice. I remember when I was an usher. Um, we were brought in, and, and this was a while back, and, and you know, I was an usher lead. And then they had like this moment where they brought all the ushers lead because they were going to promote one of the ushers to become the head usher of the whole ministry. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know that. And I was like, all right, let's go. So then they promoted this other person, and I was happy. I was like, oh, thank God it's not me, man. Like, you know, but I was happy. And I remember I, I called my wife, and I was like, yeah, they promoted this person. It's awesome. She's like, are you okay? <laughs> like, I mean, does it make you upset? I'm like, no, man, I'm actually happy for him. I rejoice with him because we, I knew my position here. I knew that I wasn't going to be an usher for long. Mm-hmm. I understood what God had for me. You know what I'm saying? If you can't understand your calling, then you're going to be mad all the time. If you can't understand your calling, then you're always going to be mad. You're always going to be upset. You're always going to be like, how come they don't promote me and they promote this person? This person's younger than I am. I'm older than this person. I've lived a harsher life than this person. You know, and then you start to think all that. Mm-hmm. But you need to understand your lane. Understand your lane. Even the disciples. There was a point where the disciples kind of lost a little focus. They didn't understand their lane. I didn't give this to them, but this is Luke 9.46 when... Then a dispute arose among them as to which of them would be greater. See, they didn't understand that they would all be great. They didn't understand that. They had that little funkiness. And then Jesus brought some correction with love. The trainer, the trainer came back and said, let me bring you back. Let me bring you back, right? It's uncomfortable to stay in your lane, right? How many of you guys agree with that? It's uncomfortable because sometimes we think we can do it better than someone else. But we have to stay in the lane that God has called us to do. Okay, you don't have to worry about that because I will never think that I can do it better than you guys. And that's the truth. I would never. Right, babe? Mm. Right. I would never be like, you know what? I could fix that cabinet better than that guy. You know what I'm saying? Or I can exercise or run further than that guy. Don't, don't worry about it. I will never get there, okay? Never, ever, 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 ever. It's a growing process. And when we look at the disciples, they were uncomfortable. When Jesus called all 12 of the disciples, he called 12 ordinary men, right? He said, come, follow me, and I'll make you what? Fishers of men, right? But when I read that, I read it into, come, follow me, and I'll make you uncomfortable. Let's go. Let's go, because I'm taking you out of your comfort zone. I'm taking you out of what you know. What you know, what your life is, what you knew up to this point, I'm transforming it all. And that's what I want to share with you guys tonight. God is transforming each and every one of you guys. Maybe you're here for the first time. Maybe you've been coming for a while. I don't know. And maybe you're like, where do I fall in? What body part am I? I hope I'm not the foot because the foot stinks. (laughs) Right? You think the foot stinks, right? But the foot also kicks right? But the foot also runs fast. See, so the feet are going to come in play when there's a big dog chasing you or a big bear. You're going to run fast, right? So I want to share with you guys, the disciples, they get called, right? And they start following Jesus, right? And what happens? He starts to train them. He's a trainer. He's training them, training them, training them. And guess what happens? They start depending on him, on him. See, but when Jesus walked the earth, he walked the earth as what? Man, So now they're depending on man. They were depending on man, Jesus. 
He's a man. And when he was crucified and went to heaven, then they were freaked out. Then they were like, what? We walked with this guy for three. Now he's gone. What are we going to do? Ah, they're, they're freaking out. But then what happens? Jesus comes back as Jesus, the Jesus that we know. And he says, hey, 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 calm down. I prepared you for this. Now they depend on Jesus as God, as our Lord. See, and at that point, they understood their lane. They understood what God had called each and every one of them to do. I could imagine the disciples getting together and all 12 of them getting together and saying, all right, guys, this is it, man. It's time to go out. Jesus has commissioned us. Are you excited? I am. I'm going to go win the world. I know my lane. I know what I've been called to do. I know it. And if he took 12 ordinary men, he can take you guys. He could take me. I look at my life, and it was funny. Pastor Jessica reminded me of that right earlier when we were praying. I look at my life, and I'm like, man, I would have, seven years ago, I wouldn't have imagined myself here. I used to hate people. So if you fall into the category of people, I hated you. <laughs> and that was the truth. I wouldn't talk to you. My wife, we would argue on the way to church. You better talk to people or else. So I would come. And I would say, hey, Pastor Felicia, how are you doing? How's everything? Good? And then she would start to open up to me. I'd be like, I got nothing more, man. See, my wife told me that I had to talk to someone. So that's all I got. I'll see you later. I did what I had to do, but guess what? Then I, my wife would get phone calls like my mom. And your husband's a jerk, right? True story. Yes. Ephesians 4.11. And he himself gave some to be apostles some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. We're all different bodies, right? He's called each and every one of us to be something in the church. Something. And sometimes it becomes a little overwhelming. Well, I can't be a pastor. I can't be an apostle. I, I, there's no way. But you can be someone who supports them. Mm -hmm. See, the disciples knew that they were called to be what? In the five-fold ministry. They were called to operate in the five-fold ministry. So I want to break down the five-fold ministry. Give me five minutes to break it down. You guys ready? Yes. When I think about the five-fold ministry, I think about a hand. Everybody pick up a hand. Look at your hand. The hand is awesome. I work in orthopedics. I can tell you what every bone in your hand does. I can tell you if I see a fracture in your hand, I can tell you how you broke it. I could tell you what you were doing. And people are like, wow. But it's just experience because I know the hand. So when we look at the hand, let's look at the thumb. The thumb is the furthest, right? From your hand, you're like, man, that's kind of weird. It's the furthest. But that stands for the apostle. The apostle. The apostle is the thumb. The apostle is the what? Leader of leaders. That's the definition of the apostle. The apostle. Who was the apostle? Peter. Peter. He was a leader of leaders. He was doing everything, right? He was going out, planning churches, going left and right, going everywhere, making sure he was building up leaders. And sometimes, it doesn't happen at this church. I heard it happens at the church on the street, okay? When I look at our pastor, I look at him as an apostle. He's building up leaders. He's planting churches. He has vision. That's the vision that God gave him. Not only is he planting churches now, God is saying, this church needs help. This, this church needs help. Go, go, go. And when you are working as a one body together, you're excited. We rejoice with him. But sometimes when we're not, we look at him and be like, man, he's gone again. Pastor's gone again. See, but we need to look at that and rejoice. We need to understand that we play an important role. If you notice, the thumb, it's, it's the whole there's tendons, there's ligaments, there's everything that makes the thumb move. That's, that's us right there. We're the ones that make our pastor move. We push him. See, sometimes, how many of you guys are like, I want him to bring the loss, bring the loss, Jesus. We want to we wanna build up this church, right? So when I was looking at, thinking about the thumb, I was thinking like, when you grab water, you need your thumb to drink the water, right? That completes it. But if you don't have a thumb, it's really hard to grab the water, right? It's, you can't really grasp it. So when I think about that, I think about us, the church, our church, Elevate Church. 
I think about pastor going out and doing things, picking up people, picking them up, building up churches. But when, when we're like, oh, man, why is he gone again? Why is he not here? I think about like, man, you get the, the water bottle, you're drinking, and someone's suffering trying to get the water. And you're like, sucks for you, man, because it is hot outside. Let me drink the water, you know? So that's the apostle. Next is the, the prophet. The prophet. And the prophet is the pointer finger. Points. All the women are like, yes. No, just like, but it's the pointer finger. See, the apostle and the prophet work together. The apostle and the prophet work together. How do they work together? They work in unity. They work, the apostle needs the prophet, and the prophet needs the apostle. I take my keys out. See, the prophet will tell the apostle where to go, what direction to move, what to do, what God is speaking, what God is saying, and the, and the apostle will move. Have you guys ever tried to turn on your car with the last two fingers? You know, can, right? It's hard. Well, some of you guys are going to be smart and be like, well, I have push start. All right. Well, let's think old school. So you think old school. Okay, when you open, there's no push start when you open your house door. So, huh, I got you there. See, but you need, you need your thumb and you need your pointer finger to put the key in and turn it. You need it. You need it. It goes in and turns. Right? Amen? Amen. 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 All right. Then we have... Should I say it? Then we have the middle finger, the evangelist. Okay. Look at Demons. Don't show us your middle finger, please. Right? You guys want to know why the middle finger is the evangelist? Because <laughs> <No. laughs> when you look at it, look, look. Everybody pick up your hand. Pick up your hand. I don't want to fall. Pick up your hand. Look at the middle finger. It extends the furthest. The evangelist is going to go further. He's going to go out of the house. We have evangelists here. We have Devin and Mia. We have Maria and Dennis. We have evangelists in this house that are going to, to preach the gospel. We have Pastor Edgar and, and Nicole who go, even our evangelists within the city here, within, within the county, within the state. And sometimes we say, well, we're not called to be evangelists. I can't go to uh, Japan. I can't go to uh, Uganda. Well, you can go to Santa Paula. You can help out. That's how we know that we are all working together. Right. right? Then we have the ring finger, which is the pastor. And the ring finger stands for that our pastor is married to this church. So that, that's why we, when we look at our pastors, we need to know that he's married to this church. We have amazing pastors in this house. Every single uh, assistant pastor that we have here, we know that they love the church. We know that they love the church. And they're running in their lane. I have never seen any of our pastors here. And I've seen it at other churches where they run on each other's lane, where they stumble with each other, when they want to promote themselves better than, than, than most. You know what I'm saying? But well, that doesn't happen here because we're all in unity. We all understand our position here. Yeah, and it's important that we honor every single pastor that's in this house because our pastor has positioned them in that place. And so it is our role to support and love each pastor and rejoice with them and what God's doing with them. Amen. Amen. And then we have the last one which is the little finger, the pinky. You're like, man, I don't want to be the pinky. I don't want to be the pinky. The pinky is the teachers. The pinky is the teachers. Our teachers here are amazing, guys. And the teachers that are, and the assistants to the teachers are amazing. Every time I pick up my kids, there's not a Sunday or a Wednesday where my kids don't tell me what they learned about you know, I always have this, this, this joke with my kids. I'm like, what did you learn about Sunday? I'm like, and don't tell me it's about Jesus, you know? <laughs> and they're like, well, we learned about the Holy Spirit and how to pray and how there's miracles. And I'm like, that's awesome. And then it never fails. No, it's like, but Jesus says, I don't leave you an orphan. I leave you a <laughs> helper. And he's like, I said, Jesus, I'm sorry. I'm like, no, that's awesome. <laughs> you know, I always play with them. But you know what? Our teachers are amazing. And sometimes we might... You might look at the pinky and be like, mm, okay, teachers. But you know what? The, the, the pinky plays an important role too. Mm -hmm. That brings balance to your hand. Mm -hmm. If you didn't have a pinky, then you start like, you know, yeah. you start writing kind of weird. If you didn't have a pinky, if you don't have a pinky, man, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm not making fun of you guys. We're on my pinky list now. I'm just playing. I was actually born with six fingers. And just a side note, but yeah. I don't have it. They cut so it she's pinkyless. <laughs> no, I have a pinky. With no, because you had a extra pinky, man. <laughs> But what am I saying? You might be sitting here and be like, well, I don't know. I'm not called to those 
But what I'm saying is you're part of the body. You're part of this house. You're part of, of Elevate Church. And you play an important part here. You're a support to every single pastor, every single teacher, every single evangelist, every single minister in this house. You're a support. You're as important as they are. Because they couldn't do it without you guys. They couldn't do it without your prayers. They couldn't do it without you. I love the picture of the hand. Um, It reminds me of 1 Peter 5, um, verse 6. And it says, Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, Set aside self-righteous pride so that he may exalt you to a place of honor in his service at the appropriate time. And I love that verse. It goes on to say, casting all your cares, your anxieties, your worries, all your concerns, once and for all on him, he cares for you with deepest affection and watches over you very carefully. And I love the picture of the hand because it's saying humble yourself under the hand. And God has given us in this house, if this is your house, if Elevate Church is your house, your covering, God has given us leaders to be our covering. And it's, it's almost like he's saying humble yourself and love this house, support this house, support your leaders. And, and as you do that, as you're in your house serving and building and growing, I will exalt you and raise you to a place of honor and service as well. I love that. You know, partnering up in this house is important. Partnering up in your church is important. If you're visiting, that's awesome. But partner up in your house. Partner up in your home church. You know what I'm saying? Know what your church stands for. Walk under that. Because, see, my kids know what we stand for. Imagine if someone asks you, like, what does your family stand for? I don't know. Dude, you're like 18. You've been there for 18 years. You know what your family stands for? I don't know, man. It's just my family. You know, what your stand, you know what your family stands for. Same thing with our church. Can I see the umbrella, Rebecca? So we, when, we talk, when we think about a covering, Elevate Church is our covering here, right? We, as if we serve here, this is our covering. If we are partners within this church, this is our covering. The disciples, their covering was Jesus, right? So when I think about covering, I think about an umbrella. I think about, I can't help an umbrella. Some of you guys are like, he opened an umbrella in church. It's okay, man. I pray before I opened it. So don't worry about it. We're good. So here I am, right? I love my church. I'm like, hey, come to my church, man. This is awesome. I bring, bring Jessica, bring my wife. You know, she brought me under her covering 17 years ago. You know, I was like, I'll go to your church. You're kind of cute. You know, so I went to your church, accepted Jesus, and I got married. And then I have four kids. And I'm just gonna, I mean, my kids are like, man, that's messed up. All right. So we're walking, right? We're walking. We're walking. We're happy. We're walking under the covering. We're happy, happily, happily serving. It's amazing, right? But then, but then, but then, if we don't understand who we really are, if we don't understand our lane, this is what happens. Then I'm like, hey, hold that umbrella. Then I'm like, hey, you know what? I like what's going on over there. They don't have that here. So then I'm like, I'll be, right, I'll be right back. Then I'm somewhere else, doing something else. Now I'm, a, I'm out of my church covering. Now it's a, it's a me thing. It's not no longer a church thing. Hey, I, I wasn't promoted at my church. I wanted to do this, and I wasn't promoted, so I'm going to go help out over here. And then there she is, happy, loving. <laughs> but then when drama starts to hit, everything starts to happen, then I start freaking out. Why? Because I'm walking out of my covering. The reason that we want a covering and the reason that we want a covering with our church and our leaders is because it's a training ground. It's a training ground. The disciples walked under Jesus' covering because it was their training ground. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.